In this presentation, we're going to look at um, the concept of PERT, P-E-R-T, which actually stands for Program Evaluation and Review Technique. And the difference between PERT and CPM is that PERT actually assumes that the durations of the activities are probabilistic. Um, it, it would be nice if we actually knew ahead of time what they were, but if we were to take any activity in the network, we could. It the activity has a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma. Most times we don't know that. So what do we do? We would say, all right, um, let's get three estimates. One which we call an optimistic estimate. One which we call M, most likely, and the other one which we call B, pessimistic. What we do is we use those three to kind of give us an estimate of mu and sigma, and here's how we do it. We'll say, calculate the mean of, the, uh, the estimate the mean of the activity as follows. We're going to weight these three times that we have. We're going to take A plus 4M plus B over, over 6, which what we're doing here is we're weighting the most likely four times and then each of those once. And that gives us the estimate of the average of the activity. And then the standard deviation would be B minus A over 6. And why do we use B minus A over 6? It's because if we believe that this is the total spread of the data between B and A, you know, optimistic and pessimistic, then what happens is that that spread represents six standard deviations in a normal distribution, plus or minus three standard deviations, covers the range, almost 99.97%. And so here's our estimate of mu and sigma. And then all we need to do in the end is, um, is compute for each activity the mean and standard deviations and so forth. So for each of those, we would need estimates of the times. So if we use the notation A and B for each one of those, we would say five, we just use as an example, five, seven, and 10. So that would mean five days optimistic, seven days most likely, 10 days pessimistic. Four, four, and six. Optimistic is four. Most likely it's four, but pessimistic is six. That, that means somehow we can't do better than four is what is what, what's been suggested here. Um, in this case, we could say eight, 10, 12. We could equally distribute it around the 10. And three, five, seven, and so forth. So given this data, what we would do is create a table where we would say, okay, give me the activity, activity J, give me your A, your M, your B, and then we would estimate our mu, estimate our variance, and so for example, A, we would say is 5, 7, 10. But to estimate A, the mean of A, uh, we would have to say 5 plus 4 times 7 plus 10. 4 7 is 28, 38 and 5, 4, 35 is 43 divided by 6. 43 over 6 is um, six sevens of 42 and one six. So the mean is seven and one six, right? And the variance in this case is 10 minus five over six squared. So which is five six squared or 25 over 36. 
25 for most of these. So we would repeat that for each one of uh, the activities. And then once we compute them, the one of the longest average duration we would use as a critical path. And we would have a sense of the mean and standard deviation of that path. Now, a couple of things we need to know. So the mean of a path is the sum of all of the activities on that path. The sum over J, where J is contained in that path. That's the mathematical notation for this. And then the variance of a path is the sum of all of the variances of the activities J contained in that path. So what's an example of this? If my path is A, B, D, then all I'm saying is, um, so let's just take path A, B, D as an example. Uh, let's see here. A, B, D, so the mean for that path would then be mu A plus mu B plus mu D, which we would get from the table right here. And then the variance of that path would then be sigma squared A plus sigma squared B plus sigma squared D. Once we have those two things, then of course we could go ahead and um, it's going to be a new sheet here. Now we could go ahead and um, get the mean and standard deviations for that path. So here we go. If we now have the path, we have a mean of the path, a standard deviation of the path, we could ask questions like this. What's the likelihood that that path would complete? What's the probability that the path, the duration of the path, would be less than or equal to t? This time right here. So what if the path had a mean of, say, for example, I'm just going to use an arbitrary example here, uh, 15 days, with a standard, and the standard deviation was 5 days. So we would want to know what's that probability of, of, of achieving this. So how do we get that? The, this has a corresponding z. z associated with the t is x minus mu over sigma. But what if we say, what's the probability in completing in 20 days? So now t is 20. So where we have x is really t. It's 20 minus 15 over 5. It gives us a z value of 1.0. And I don't quite remember the area under the curve, but certainly what we would end up doing is that um, p, the duration of the path, less than or equal to 20 would then be 0.5 plus whatever the area is associated with 1.0 under the curve. If you have a cumulative table, then you just look at 1.0. But if you have the table that's where we only get from the table, where we only get from the table, the area between 0 and Z, then of course it makes sense that you would have to add this 50% right here, which is what I've just done. All right? So that allows you to actually find, um, to do some probabilistic analysis. So what's the probability of finishing in 20 days, probability of finishing in 30 days, and so forth. All right? And that's actually quite useful. The last thing I want to um, share with you here, I'm going to open up a new page and uh, is crashing of projects. Project crashing. And what does that mean? Sometimes when we initially planned a project, it was going to schedule to be completed by a certain time. But now that um, the client says, well, we would like to actually finish maybe two weeks earlier. It means that the activities you estimate have to be crashed. And how do we crash a project? Essentially, we focus on the critical path and we try to reduce the activities on that path first. 
So typically what you'll be given is for an activity for a project you'll be given the normal time and the crash time, the normal cost and the crash cost. Right? So and let's say this these are the activities. A, B, C, D, simple network, uh, A, B, C, D. All right. So what if A, normal time, five days, crash time, three days, B, ten days, uh, seven days, uh, fifteen days. Cut that down to 12 days. And D is uh, 6 days, and we cannot reduce it. Right? So when you look at the, the, your normal times, A is 5, B is 10, C is 15, and this is 6. So my critical path is 26, this is 15, 21. So critical path would be A, C, D at 26. The other, and so that's my critical path. The other path is A, B, D at 21. So there's a difference of about five days between them. Now, Normal cost, let's say, normal cost is 500 bucks, but if you want to crash it, you got to pay $800. Then the end normal cost is 1000 If you want to crash it, you'll pay $1,300. Normal cost is $400. If you want to crash it, you'll pay... thousand dollars and then here in this case um, it really doesn't matter because we can so one of the things that we actually determine is the crashing costs crash cost rate per unit time right so in this case we would calculate that as your crash cost Manage your normal cost, subtract your um, normal time minus your crash time. So, for example, for activity A, if we were to do this, it would be 800 minus 500 divided by um, 5 minus 3. So, there's a difference of um, two days in here. And uh, three hundred dollars difference. So three hundred divided by three is one hundred fifty dollars per week or per day, whatever the unit is, right? And we will repeat that for each one of them. So let's let's, let's try to do that. So this is one fifty per day. Crash cost per time, unit time. Uh, this is thirteen hundred, and then it's three, so that's just one hundred. This one is uh, 603 days, so that's 200 per day. So the way in which we'll crash, we'll crash in order of cost. So activity B, can we crash B? Yes, we can, but guess what? B is not on the critical path. The critical path is here. So to reduce, the only time you would make sense crashing B is if both paths have now become critical. So there's a six, there's about a five days slack between those. So we have to crash either A or C. If we crash C, it's going to cost us 200. The crash A is 150. So let's crash A and we'll take the maximum out of A, which is two days. So two by 150, this is a, this the first decision is going to cost us $300. And now we're down to two days. All right. <clears throat> but guess what? Everything shifts by two days. So really, relatively speaking, if I cross that out now and increase it by two, the paths are just now 
uh, 2 and 10 and 18. Next, the path is now 18. It's going down to 18. And this one, we crashed it, I think, was it by 3 days? So 3 compared to 23. So the relative advantage, there's no relative advantage here. The next one to then crash now is C. But C only has 3 days to crash. So it will cost us $600. Right? And when we crash that by 3, we go from 15 days now to 12 days. And so now we have 2 and 12 is 14. 14 and 6 is 20. So we're able to bring this down to 20. This still remains at 18. And so the best that we can do with this little project is to crash it down to... So the new completion time is 20 weeks or days and the cost for us was 600 plus 300 dollars plus 900 dollars so that's that's the essence of crashing right there Okay. Now we can optimize those things in, um, in spreadsheets or using optimization software such as linear programming. A little bit beyond, linear programming is a little bit beyond the scope of our course. Not beyond your skill, but basically the scope. We don't want to get into that. Um, but um, it may be possible to do it in uh, XLOM. Actually, there is, in addition to XLOM, there's POM, which is a, a you know, equivalent software. But not a spreadsheet vision. So, okay, so there's Palm software. I will post a link because it's an exe file. I think I have to post a link of where you could get it. Or Excel OM, which we get from the textbook site as well. All right. So hopefully, crashing is now clear, um, and, and the value that it brings to an organization when you're under time constraints.